me? Ethel, have you forgotten everything from third year? Luckily, we've got just the man to sort you out. Ethel, I hear you've been a naughty girl and forgotten how to do an abdo exam. Have you even washed your hands? Students, come on then. Let's start again. After introducing yourself and asking the patient to lie flat, you then state that you would expose them from nipples to knees. But I think, Ethel, in an OSCE, it's best just to expose the belly. Step back from the edge of the bed, Ethel. Now don't pretend like you did in that ill-fated driving test. Actually look this time for any clues, such as sick bowls, drugs, scars or stomas. Also, ask the patient if they can cough to assess for any visible hernias. Examples of scars that may be encountered are McBurney's, Lands, Midline Laparotomy, Hockey Stick, Mercedes Benz, Fannensteel and Cockers. Oh, and don't forget to keep your eyes peeled for any laparoscopic port scars, Ethel. Also take note of my general appearance. It could play a vital role in your final diagnosis. Excellent, Ethel. Right. Ask the patient if they're in any pain, and then proceed to examine the hands, checking for any peripheral signs of abdominal disease. The examiner may ask for a list of examples, and it is useful to have these ready. Such a list may include coilinichia, leukonychia, clubbing, palmar erythema, and Dupuytren's contracture. But be careful to know the causes of any signs you may mention. The GI causes of clubbing include malabsorption, inflammatory bowel disease, lymphoma and cirrhosis. At this point, it is also useful to check for hepatic encephalopathy by attempting to elicit a liver flap. This sign is called asterixis. Briefly assess the pulse for regularity and any tachycardia. Then check the arms for spider nevi, excoriations, bruising, xanthomata, tattoos and track marks from IV drug abuse. Look in the patient's eyes and check for any icterus, anemic pallor or Kaiser Fleischer rings. Then look in their mouth and check the tongue for any ulcers, angular stomatitis, glossitis or macroglossia. Cheekier examiners may attempt to put a patient with Poitz Jaegers in the exam, so be on the lookout for any pigmented buccal mucosa, Ethel. Observe the chest, checking for any spider nevi or gynecomastia. Then, kneel down at the level of the patient's abdomen, checking for any veins, protrusions, scars or distension. Inquire about any pain, then lightly palpate the nine areas, whilst looking at the patient's face, Ethel! This is simply to screen for any tenderness. Splendid. Now, palpate each area again, this time feeling deeper for masses or organomegaly. Make sure you remember which viscera are in each area that you palpate. Palpate for a liver edge by pressing in on consecutive inspirations. If you feel an edge, state whether it is hard, irregular, or even pulsatile. Now, attempt to palpate for the spleen, starting in the right iliac fossa, as you did for the liver, and working your way across to the left hypochondrium. A large spleen may be found in CML, due to invasion by malignant cells. Other causes of splenomegaly can include rheumatological conditions, lymphoma, infection, and postal hypertension. Percuss the upper and lower borders of the liver ethyl. The upper border may be depressed in hyperinflation, mimicking hepatomegaly. Only attempt to percuss for the spleen if you detected splenomegaly on palpation. Now, blot the kidneys, thus. Excellent! So, what are the causes of an enlarged kidney, Ethel? Hmm? Something to ponder! Always be 
be sure to palpate the centre of the abdomen for the expansile mass of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Now, if the patient's abdomen appears distended, you can offer to test for a fluid thrill or shifting dullness. But, don't spend too long on these, as they can often become dull by name and by nature. Make sure that you remember the five F's that can cause abdominal distension. Auscultate in up to three areas, listening for bowel sounds. These may be normal, tingling, or absent. Ask the patient to sit forwards on the edge of the bed. Inspect their back for any renal scars, and auscultate for any renal bruise. If pain-free, palpate for any cervical lymphadenopathy, and also for any sacral or pedal edema. On completion, thank your patient and make them comfortable, then state you would examine their external genitalia and hernial orifices and perform a PR exam. Ethel, as I always say, stick your finger in it before you stick your foot in it. Okay, full marks for effort, Ethel. But in Oskies, it's more than just about regurgitating the facts. You've got to sound slick, like this. Mr. Cobley is comfortable at rest with no peripheral signs of abdominal disease, but he does have an old midline laparotomy scar and a raised stoma in his right iliac fossa. His abdomen is soft and non tender with no masses or organomegaly. Bowel sounds are normal in character. These all suggest that Mr. Cobley may have had a previous colectomy with formation of an ileostomy. Well, Ethel, I hope you've learned something today, and if you have, congratulations! But if you haven't, it's your fault for not listening hard enough, and I take no responsibility for any mistakes you make in the future. <laughs>